for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and we're just talking off screen now, but we're talking, we met up um, on an involved West Coast Swing kind of social Zoom call where we had a lot of fun and you guys were sharing some really interesting stories and drawing some amazing pictures. I think I have to say, Emily, you won with that, but Jakob, I love that you always had a sunshine in your pictures. I have to feel better. So I was hoping we could just kind of have a chat and um, share some stories because you guys have a really interesting journey into dance, some of the things you've been exploring in lockdown and some other stories that you shared. So I was wondering if we could start with like, obviously we're still in lockdown, we're very casual. You've done your first event just now for a while, I believe. Yeah. You're looking very relaxed after it, which is good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just like, yeah, kind of, I still need some more sleep. Um, and I was just wondering if you could um, like, let us know what, what lockdown's given you a chance to explore and learn that maybe sometimes your schedule doesn't allow you to do because you're very dedicated to the dancing, obviously. Uh, actually, it's funny because the fact that we've been to an event again after six months really allowed me to point out what I've been able to do for the past six months without event. Mm. And for me, it's really to have, um, it's not, let's say healthy schedule, but it's way easier when I've got the time to decide how I can shape my days the way I want to, in terms of like rest, uh, body activities, in terms of sort of food, mm. because I like decide what we cook, of course, mm. um, sleep, so the importance of like the sleep that we usually don't have during event. Mm. Um, but for me, it really gave me time to invest in activities on a really regular basis without having anything that comes in the way to stop it. So uh, I started bouldering things to Yacoub and now I'm really addicted to it. So bouldering is like uh, climbing, but without the rope. Um, doing yoga. So for like, I don't know, three months in a um, in a row, I could do yoga really daily and have a strict schedule. Invest in friends, mm. which usually we cannot really uh, build, uh, not build strong relationship, but let's say face to face mm. interaction mm. on a really basis. Um, so, doing normal activities like going into the park and have picnic or have game nights, or which usually it's difficult because even if a weekend event is four days, when we come back, we're usually tired because of the change in schedule. So we need time to rest or sleep or do laundry. Um, and yeah. when our friends have also their work days, mm -hmm. um, so it's really hard to uh, coordinate. Uh, so this was really, really nice. Um, and also plants. So I've never had a living being that I need to take care of. <laughs> oh, what kind of plant have you gone for? Ooh la la. So I've got some, um, an Alocasia zebrina. I've got, and they're wonderful. I can look at them right now. Uh, I have a Calithea, uh, two kind. I have another one. I forgot the name, but she's beautiful. Uh, so to see them grow. Yeah. And leaves and um so it's like some very small simple things but that makes me happy yeah no i really love this i've been trying to grow vegetables this year and i really like being able to go out in your garden see it grow and like go oh this is food i can now eat it as well i'm very motivated by food so <laughs> if i can grow it and eat it this is great <laughs> yeah. there's an interesting social aspect of it for us who as I said, weekends are usually for uh, teaching like abroad and then coming back to um, for a few days while our friends are having different schedules. So I think for the past months, it's been like rebalancing back to where I would like to have it when mm -hmm. it comes to social life. My personal, not uh, dancing social life. So that was interesting. I, besides all the activities that I mentioned, gardening, yeah, 
<laughs> so what's been your best crop? What's been the best plant to grow? Uh, so far, I was successful with strawberries. They, they survived. Um, a little bit of peas, but I missed them because I was a month away. Mm. Um, I, there, is, there is a high chance that I'm going to have tomatoes and bell paprikas, but I don't know. They are kind of like, they have their own personalities. And <laughs> they just decide, like, one time I feel like, yes, I'm going to go. <laughs> the second time, like, no, you know what? No, <laughs> I'm just going to die here. <laughs> so yeah. that's an interesting process for me, not only for the fruits, but also for the part of observing, meditating, taking care of accepting that there is only limited things that I can do for them and they don't speak to me. So I have to be like, what do you want really from me? And then <laughs> have to have a different time. I've heard, I've heard some gardeners say that actually their plants do speak to them. It's just like a language you've got to learn. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, not in the, in the face of like talking out loud to them yet. Okay, you're not there yet. Uh, I've talked to, to mine. On yeah. Different level. <laughs> yeah and I feel like as you said like the observing part because you learn how to understand their positioning and you know when they're not happy when they're happy like yeah it's an intuition mm. I like that that connection mm. as well I love that and um so like w when I coach as well um we quite often work with analogies and I quite often use plants as an analogy particularly with any like leadership role because I think you know, we can quite often have a plant that's just dying in one location and then you give it the right food to the right amount of sunlight and it absolutely flourishes. And um, yeah, and you're like, wow, I didn't know. And it's just like, it's not the plant's fault. It's just not in the right place. It's not receiving the right things. And I, I love using that analogy for us or for people we're trying to encourage because you're like, well, what does it need? What does this person need? What does this plant need? Um, and I had an example of that. I'm trying to grow aubergines. They're like almost maybe going to give flowers. So they might have fruit. But there was just a stick I used to um, support it. And the stick started growing. <laughs> I thought it was dead. <laughs> and it's going, no, I'm going to grow. I'm like, okay, I don't know what you are, but we'll see where you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love that analogy. I think slowing down is really good. And if you said you like carrying any learnings, were you like moving into this new world that we have where we get to decide our pace and our rhythm? What do you think are the biggest lessons for you from lockdown? Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Processing. Um, I think I learned that sometimes i'm i'm glad for that someone is deciding for me meaning if there is a general excuse not to do something i feel relieved because i don't feel the pressure of i should be doing something instead of i'm told to not to do something therefore i can do so i found an interesting perspective to the freedom of choice for myself and how much freedom I'm actually craving for and how much of a freedom I'm not able to still use if that makes sense yeah so you kind of it's almost easier for you when somebody else is almost boundarying on things that you maybe don't necessarily it's not in your top priority to invest time and energy in but you feel maybe a duty to attend and so what I'm hearing is that when somebody else gives you a reason to not attend it, you feel better. You don't have any kind of guilt or decision-making difficulty. Yeah, I found it really relaxing for myself just because I had to just stay home and do almost meaning like inside activities. Mm -hmm. That limitation, that bubble that I found myself really comfortable in. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the sea of options of doing like anything in my life. So it was what kind of interesting for me to feel it inside. Yeah, interesting. And do you think you're going to find a way to maybe make sure you're not overwhelmed with choice, like moving forwards as things open up? I hope for that. I hope that this experience will not make me feel just that I want to have restrictions on myself. I don't think that this is what I crave for. 
mm. but to be okay with the things I'm doing in general mm. compared to like even comparing what I'm doing to what I should would have to do um, yeah it's almost removing that should and going where do I want to go yep. oh I like that thank you and Emmeline do you have anything uh, for me, I would say more that it made me realize how much I'm grateful for um, the human security that I have around. Because I feel like when I had all my travelings going on every weekend, um, I always thought about myself as quite independent, mm -hmm. not craving people overall, or I had my close friends, but I felt like, oh, I'm good by myself, you know, like all yeah. this self-reliance or something like that. Um, and so the first time I'm really staying with uh, my closest friend in Berlin and also in communication with my closest friend outside. And um, it's the first time that it's not me who left, but my friend who went away. Wow. So we yeah, because we were living together for two years and a half, mm. three years, with uh, Matilda, Tomola, and Clem. And um, in May, um, so he moved out. I mean, 10 minutes away. It's nothing, but still. <laughs> uh, Matilda had to go to Sweden for three months because of the situation and to work. And it's the first time that I found myself um, left behind yeah or um and even if i was sad i was actually extremely grateful to realize how much the presence of certain people make my life what it is and the comfort that i have to travel mm. so it's because i know that i have this behind and that is there and secure that i can allow myself to have so much freedom and be away and still be fine in my head um, yeah so it was like that value of that connection there yes base. the base like the mm. my base community yeah outside of the dance community outside of the even family community but like this core mm -hmm. um so this i think was one of the biggest lesson for me and uh i think because i had so much time to process things, to read, to get new inputs, to also have maybe new relationships that awaken different side that I didn't know, I didn't want to look at, uh, let's say, um, made me also step back from responsibility over people. So we were talking about plans, for instance, and I feel like because we decide actually to make them grow in a way, so uh, the responsibility is big, but I wouldn't treat human at all like this. Mm -hmm. and, or I felt like even at events, uh, I, as maybe teacher, but I think everyone, we really feel responsible for people overall, you know, that they enjoy the class, that they uh, enjoy the dance with us, that um, we make them win at a competition. Like it's so much towards the outside and we're so defining ourselves towards if I manage to do this, then I'm okay. Mm. And I, step by step, I start to step back from that and say, I know my responsibility in what I can do. And I would just focus on that. Without project. It's not for everything. It's like, this is where I can affect change. And this is where I'm responsible. And then these other things I can be aware of, but they're not on me. It's like other oh, people's task. It's not mine. I cannot. I cannot touch that. And I think it's a huge freedom mm. for yourself, and it's removing a lot of pressure. So I would definitely take that and trying to apply it at every weekend because uh, the charge of feeling responsible, especially as a pro, I feel mm -hmm. like it's really big when you step in a weekend, and as a public figure in a way. Uh, yeah, so you're being observed and you're sort of there to help people enjoy themselves and make sure they learn and a lot of other things. And yeah, there must be a lot of pressure. So you think hopefully carrying this learning forwards, it will allow you to maybe keep some energy for you so that you don't need so much recovery time, right? Yeah. 
and just yeah. be more okay with things overall. Mm, like let it go a little bit. Yeah, it's like it's cool. <laughs> wow, this is some really deep reflections. Thank you. Sounds like a, quite like a transformative time, really. I guess so. I don't know about this. I don't know if it's transformative or more that it finally got the time to mm. the things that we collected before together. Okay, so maybe like reflective is more of a better term. I mean, got clearer. Clearer, yeah. Yeah. When you have some some stuff in the water and just it like with the time it just goes down. When we were all the time on the travels, I felt like it was always kind of like moving and all the mud and everything was like in the water. Mm -hmm. and now it's like settling down slowly. It was like, oh, look at that. I didn't know you were there. Hi. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering if we could also like kind of move on from that and look at one of the things we talked about in Evolve that I really loved was kind of you're showing a lot of like really deep reflection, a lot of clarity, a lot of um, self-awareness as well, which I think can be really hard for us to work on, particularly when we're very busy. And like I know for me, it's one of my big things that I'm trying to work on in lockdown is, is that self-reflection and self-awareness. What is it I actually need rather than things I think I need and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm not terribly well trained or structured in my training for dance. And, and I dance predominantly for the joy of it. Um, so, you know, I don't have great aspirations of being amazing, but I always want to learn and improve. So for me, this is like my outlook on dance. And I found it really interesting when you shared your, your view on how you like to dance, how you like to train, and the like creative process you go through for the open, which is possibly like maybe one of the biggest, possibly most stressful arenas you can perform in. Correct me, because, you know, I've only ever watched it on YouTube, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, would you like to share how you like to train, how you like to dance with others, and that creative process for you? How we like to dance, train, and create. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I guess it's really like depending on the moment that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it comes from how we are between ourselves. Like, if we're okay, then somehow the work is okay. Yeah. If we're not okay, then the work still, it, it, it's still done, but it takes way much more time, effort, energy, and etc. So, yeah. I think for us, what works the best on the long term is to work on that, and then the rest will come as a result of it eventually mm. i yeah. don't want to put pressure on productivity okay so, like <laughs> explain that I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean sometimes i'm really admirative <laughs> of uh west coast swing peers like couples that put so much work you know they would like train every day work out being like super uh, strict you know in their work ethic um, so even if, if they're sick or even if they're mad at each other, like, you know, they would push it. Yeah. yeah. And then just put it aside and like, yeah. yeah. Like the goal is like, for instance, the open and, you know, we're going to work, 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 work. And I, I'm really emerative because I think we're incapable of doing that. Mm. Uh, I think we really, um, our priority, I think, is always to enjoy. Mm -hmm. like a place when we enjoy what we're doing and where it's not forced mm. or pressured by outside uh deadlines or uh expectations uh because we really don't work well when we feel it's imposed mm. to us um i think we'll thrive when we feel it's coming from within and we've got really this desire to produce something and to create um, so usually when we create would be not more than two hours per day in a studio, uh, even not every day. <laughs> mm. um, and we will really assess this, like, is the relationship good? Do I actually want to be in the studio today? 
is my body actually already energized and in a good state mm. for it to happen and if it's not then we just put an end to it and it's okay tomorrow okay and so how do you manage that if like one of you is feeling really good feeling really balanced feeling really in tune and the other person just isn't in the place for that training to be productive today like how do you communicate that amongst each other uh, i think it depends on like what where we yeah. are like if if it's I'm, I'm really bad in my body and i cannot even like move almost because it's not possible then probably it's not really meaningful to do that but mm -hmm. if one of us is down like mentally or like cannot handle those, that particular moment well and the other one has the energy to to bring the other up or hold for for the time being then it's it's a partnership we're on the yeah. same team so i think we're able to do that for each other from time to time if it's not a huge huge difference mm -hmm. then we can we can do that so you just kind of communicate on the day and check in with each other and say, this is where I am at, where are you at? Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, well, I feel like because we've been living together for maybe three years, like working together, yeah, three or four, I think now we don't even need to talk. <laughs> just like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I love that. So you're in the flow with each other. It's like non-verbal. You just look at each other. I feel like even sometimes we know even before the other that is not in the mood yeah. to do it. She knows that. Yeah, it's like that. Um, but you feel like it's now like it's so established that we read like the body uh, language, language yeah. like the energy level, like the vibes, like the way you talk, like the way you answer, like even the way you dance. Yeah. It's very obvious. So yeah, this makes it easier because we have a sort of communication that does not need to be said. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, yeah, this is cool for the creation process. Sometimes I catch myself feeling pressure to be like other people. Mm -hmm. uh, whether I feel like Jakub is way more detached from that. So sometimes I start to feel pressure if I feel a lot of couple are working daily so much. I start to feel guilty about not putting the work. And I start to doubt. Um, and so you kind of get like self-comparison coming in. Well, they're doing this. Why am I not doing that? And, I'm not doing yeah. that. I'm not a good professional. I should work more. And uh, so then I tend to push us to do something to actually realize that it's not the way we work. <laughs> so you kind of test that boundary, find out, no, that's not the right thing for me. And then you let it go again. No. <laughs> so really in peace with that. Before it was harder because I really wanted maybe to be, I was projecting an ideal and I was thinking that I should be that ideal instead of assessing what's, what's, what's there, what works for us. Mm, I love hearing that because I think, you know, it's really easy at whatever level you are to do that. And for me to look and go, okay, so I'm trying to bounce a job and trying to create this website and trying to, and then I haven't done my kitchen practice and I haven't done that. And somebody's going, how many hours a day are you practicing? And I'm like, you know, in a nice way for me, this is a hobby. And I, I like having a, a work ethic. I like having a routine, but um, yeah, it's really easy to go, well, I haven't done enough or, you know, other people practice way more than I do and that comes in. And so I really like hearing that and how you, kind of realize, well, this is what works for us. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so easy to look at other people and you only see what's on the outside and what they're projecting as well, unless you know them very well. Uh -huh. um, so it's easy to draw conclusions that aren't really the truth, I guess. I'm glad you, you're talking about wellness and mindset and um, all that I call it like a soft, soft part of how we can work on ourselves because I think that's generally like not seems seen mm -hmm. overall and when we say how much do you work on yourself immediately we come to the, like physical practice at least that's like how i was set in my in my like past mm -hmm. so how much physical practice do you do but for me that like in life it's not just about the physical practice Action. yeah mm -hmm. act, like yeah. it also needs the other part like the as you said, said, the soft skills, the, the mindset, the, how we are, um, what, what we're thinking about, like all of that. And I think we 
are trying to balance the work. So it seems like we work less compared to the others, if I have any comparison, but we put the rest of the work into the soft skills between us. Uh -huh. And I think that balance is very important for me to, to have right. in, a, in a partnership, in a relationship mm -hmm. in general, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. And, and I love that because I think um, I end up in like quite a few existential like conversations with groups of coaches, with existentialists and like I love those like two o'clock in the afternoon talk for about four hours about the meaning of life and where we fit into it and all that kind of thing. But so often dance of one form or another is used as an analogy for connection to something bigger than yourself but also deeply to yourself. And, and connection to this wider purpose. So there's, there's so many analogies you can draw when you're like connecting to the music, how long ago was it written? What were the creators for that music thinking? And then the people who are playing it thinking, and then your partner as well. And then of course, if, I guess if you're performing like the audience and their feeling and their energy. And so I love that because I think we miss it. We, the skill is so important and I guess like how I think this and I'm like oh I'm like is it just because I'm a novice and I don't really know very much skill and I'm thinking this and I'm kind of giving myself that excuse of oh well the skill is you know that's only part of it um but I love hearing that because I think yeah when we have those conversations outside it's amazing and yet we come into the world of west coast and it's understandably a lot of focus on physical skill but that's what we really hope to bring in is like it's also focus on knowing me knowing my body knowing my mind knowing my energy and my spirit as well so yeah it's true that when we create i think maybe like the biggest part is in our mind because mm -hmm. even if we're not in a studio we would listen to this song time and ton of times even just for in our mind and trying to picture moves trying to picture dynamics mm -hmm. so when we actually get in a studio it's like the work is already done Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in a way, you know, the behind scenes work, the, the unseen work that yeah, it doesn't really usually count when you say like how many hours do you practice like yeah. that behind scenes is being done like for us by passion, hours and hours of listening, thinking, producing our heads, talking, yeah. discussing, and also because of the goal, because I feel like our goal, for instance, when it comes to the open, is more to show people a part of us mm. so it's not to of course it's amazing when you place you know like you don't uh how do you say a spill on it or <laughs> yeah you're not like oh man i wish i hadn't placed <laughs> <laughs> you're, ha you're happy when you get you know recognition of any sort like it's human uh but i feel like our priority is always to be very true to ourselves and to actually sell in a way or sell or to show or present or inspire through who we are, mm. not who people expect us to be. Mm. Or like that same principle about things coming from within and not uh, decided from the outside. Mm. And this like remove a lot of pressure, whether it's like the creative process or even when we have to perform it or receiving a feedback on it, it yeah, it makes it. It makes it more like calm. Calm. Because, like you're okay with whatever you're going to put on dance floor. It doesn't have to be just a routine performance. Yeah. I think it goes to the extent of many, many things in dancing slash life. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And dancing wise, when you said, you know, dancing on the social floor or even competition, our focus is similar. Like my focus for me is to feel. So if I dance, it's because of like what it provides me within, like the body mm -hmm. sensation, like the joy of body sensations. And then to the extent what it brings you like emotionally or spiritually when you get to those states. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't have any now. It was not like that before. It was really like a road. Mm. Now I really, I felt like reached a point where I don't have expectations on the product, what it should look like or what it should feel. So it allowed me to be not always, but at the maximum as I can, like really present and say that what is there is the right thing. Not, oh, 
what is there should have been different. Mm. Yes, yeah, so there's not judgment on it. It's allowing it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And you said, some, people, yeah. Yeah. you said there was like a road to getting there because I think people want to be there, but then you have so many other thoughts coming in, so many judgments coming in. If you had like one bit of advice for someone who's like, I want to be there, but I just honestly, I, and I get it, I, like, I get it quite a lot, particularly if I have a period off of events for whatever reason and then I come back and then like all of the little like, oh, you know, you don't know what you're doing and you're not in time and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, you know, like, and part of that is because I want my partner to enjoy it, right? Whatever level they are, I want, I want to be able to have fun and connection and expression. And I sometimes feel it's like learning a language and you're listening in a room and you know cognitively you understand something, but you're not able to reply yet. And it's quite frustrating sometimes. And that's for me where some of my frustration comes in and I've got to let go of it. Um, so what do you think would be like a really good a way or a bit of advice for people who want to move from that place but aren't sure how yet? Like how do I get to a place of being present? How do I get to a place of letting go of that judgment and simply being with the movement? Simple advice. Mm. <laughs> uh, first, I know it's hard. Uh, I think first is to think that you don't have to be a specific thing to feel that you have a spot somewhere. Because mm -hmm. like dance community or other community or any sometimes like sport to get in or I feel like our big fear is to not belong you know mm -hmm. to not be accepted like to mm -hmm. not feel that you're part of something and and you're there and you're secure and i think with west coast swing because it is a competitive dance as well as well like it's i think it started to be associated to thriving like being someone specific being someone unique mm -hmm. uh have your own style that you know you're not replaceable uh being like so good that the people would want to dance with you and you know you would be um so i think we start to be so scared of not being okay the way we are mm -hmm. that it's when the expectation comes in and the like the judgment and um and when you realize that people around you actually they are your friends like in a way like even if there is competition usually the competition is with yourself in the way that you would judge yourself. You would not really judge others. Uh, people want to see you doing good, you know, unless they stuck in the me winning, you losing, you know, kind of process mind. But so when I started to realize that if you fall, if you missed uh, a break uh, or anything, uh, people will forget, they don't care. Like the person that actually care is you and you are eating yourself inside. But people around, like they don't care because everyone in a way care about themselves. Yeah. Not in a bad way, but... Yeah. You know, like... Uh, so this I felt like removed some pressure and then to also not feel responsible for people bad feelings. Okay, so you're not responsible if the other person receives that moment and, and it's a negative experience for them or maybe a not such a positive experience for them. Yeah, it's like their call. So if we have a dance, I think what I can do is to enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so to feel, be in the present, being willing to share with that person, but this is where it stops. Mm -hmm. Let the person enjoy it. If the person actually take it as a competition, if the person you know, wants to be seen by others and admired, it's not my call. It's theirs. Yeah. And or dance if they thought, yeah, their call. Yeah. So it's you're you're just responsible for you. And that's going I guess that's going a little bit back to what you were saying about your learnings with events is that you know what you're responsible for and what you're not. And that gives you permission to be okay if that person's upset or if they're not, you know, of course you're not wanting to cause it, but if that's how you receive it, that's okay. And to learn how to be okay with yourself. You know, mm -hmm. to stop comparing to that ideal. It's good to have an ideal because it helps you to 
to thrive or you know to take step forward but not to take that ideal has if i don't reach that then it's the end or it's not okay but then to take it more as oh amazing like it showed me the road yeah and being okay being on the road and enjoying it yeah yeah love that thank you some really deep sharings there <laughs> I'm so. reading a book right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was recommended like from one of my best friends, uh, Lucas uh, Kalbener, and it's called uh, The Courage to be Disliked uh -huh. uh, by Ishiro something. Um, and I would recommend to everyone to read that book courage to be disliked okay i'll try and find that link or if you have a link to it i'll try and put it out for people yeah yeah because yeah. we try and put out resources i'm also working on like a book review for the site but i'm i'm been quite slow with my reading recently so audible has been my friend <laughs> to try and help with that um but yeah we'll put that out for people to learn and discover um, so I'm aware we're like eating into your time, but I was, is it okay if we take like maybe a few more minutes and just discuss a little bit about the process of going through the open and the story you shared last time, Jakob, um, with your back, would that be okay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I think because you mentioned that um, sometimes you can feel your emotions very physically, like maybe cognitively, you're not aware of them, but your body will make you aware of them. And I think, we know a little bit about that when we go, oh, I've got a tension headache or I'm really stressed, my shoulders are tight. We don't really think of like, where are we holding our emotions in our bodies so much? Would you mind sharing that story? Um, so it was a, between the prelims and the finals in the classic um, Saturday evening, the afternoon, and it wasn't, it was a result of like a long period events that were happening in my life. And I think that what it showed to me was that until a certain time, I will, I'm able to deal with upcoming emotions if, uh, if I catch them properly and if I, if I clean my, my sheet properly. Um, day by day, week by week. But then if, if I don't clean my, my dishes on a regular basis, then it just piles up and ends up being too much to handle. And I think that's where my body kicks in and says, like, we're going to have to make you feel differently than just because you cannot see it anymore in your, in your brain. You have to feel it physically somewhere in your body. And that what happened in that particular moment i don't know what was the reason of a timing there it was really like inconvenient but i think yeah, i cannot choose when it's going to happen <laughs> i guess if you've not been cleaning your dishes for a while then your body's just gonna go hey you need to realize this now <laughs> it, now talking about it makes sense in a way that i was requiring i was asking my body to do some um, work for me which is a performance of a, of a routine and I think I wasn't oh, completely paying attention to my body in, in the previous uh, um, events so it just ended up being like this is my limit my body told me like this is where we're going and you're gonna have to stay here and pay attention to me otherwise we don't work <laughs> um, and it, it took a work of, of two people on me and it was just, it felt like those dishes were like, like kind of like compressed to like a small piece of, and it was paceable and it just needed um, attention, a presence and a huge release in the moment realization forgiveness um acceptance like all those like high words for me at least and then it it just passed and went away it had some resonation so after after the treatment um it was partial massage partial some um 
like energy work on me and uh when it released i felt uh, that my body was um first of all shaking i was in a kind of like uh, shaky mode i felt that it took a lot of um heat from me so i felt cold inside like my body and it just uh, needed some time to to digest so they worked on me then i had some time of rest and then we went to dance finals after that so <laughs> just to recap so you're like between two performances and your body's like going hey <laughs> you're not doing the next one unless you pay me some attention and and was so that it? took a lot of time but that what must have you say, you're saying about all the high ideals with forgiveness and presence and all these things but to not be going well like i can't not no because nobody because next performance is coming and actually we can sort out afterwards like was there a process you had to go through going or was it just literally your body would not function anymore and so you had to go okay i'm going to give you the time you need now so that maybe i can go back on or maybe i can walk in a minute because walking is kind of important to me well it was um not like a severe not walking type of um uh, pain it was just so limiting that i think if it wasn't treat it well i would not be able to dance or breathe properly mm. without the pain meaning and um i wanted to say something before i said that uh, about it was it because because of 30 minutes before the performance yeah it shows up 30 minutes before oh. before the performance so we were about to go down so what i wanted to say just sorry before, yeah. <laughs> just coming back to my memories um was that I had to just check on myself what is important in that moment. And it was kind of in the middle of, uh, we know that the open is important for us, um, but on the long term, what is more important than the open? And I had to just realize that it is my, my corp, my, my body. And and released a lot of pressure for me just because she said well if you don't feel okay dancing we're not dancing the finals and i'm okay with that she said so that was like all right that that's that's a moment for me i need to hear that and mm -hmm. i think it helped the process to to take away the pressure from we have to do that mm -hmm. i think for me that really shows the strength of this relationship that you've been building up of understanding each other or knowing what what each other needs because to be that close to performance and and to be able to give your partner that permission so well you know what if you're not okay that's fine like there's no guilt there's no shame there's no should in there there's just let's do what you need to do um i think that shows just how strong your relationship is as a, as a dance partnership as friends as well as humans um and for you like how easy emily was that for you to to give super easy yeah like as i said like we don't our goal is not placing per se mm. to show our art and showing our art then we can do it in a lot of different places the open is just an amazing scene for that because everybody's watching mm. uh, and at that stage we already performed so people already seen uh, our new piece um so in a way, I, it's an honor to do it again, and especially mm -hmm. with our peers, and the moment is very powerful, but it's not a need. Because yeah. for me, our work was done. Like, we created something, we perform, we show it to people. So the finals is just an ice on the cake. Yeah, it's nice to have your cake. <laughs> Ice on the cake is not so attractive. <laughs> Icing on the cake or cherry on the top. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. It's okay. I get you. <laughs> so it was just, yeah, cherry on the cake. And I could see that it was actually, I, actually, I was extremely happy that it was going through that process. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> As he's like being massaged and like in pain. <laughs> I told him because I knew the dishes pile yeah like, okay freaking dishes pile mm. and when he started to have the pain and when they started to work on him and i could see that he was allowing the release 
I was so happy because I'm like, finally. Um, so this for me was more priority than the other. So if this would have meant not being in a shape to dance, mm. fine. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I think it's really important and knowing what, like going back to your goals, going back to your connection and your relationship with yourselves and with each other. I, I love hearing that and just remembering, you know, what, what is important, what, what is really important to you um it's a beautiful story thank you for sharing it <laughs> i hope that your dishes don't um pile up again like that i hope you don't have another moment where you need that <laughs> um fingers crossed you tithing this way um, i'm really appreciated like i had this experience i never had before so i don't i don't shine a bad light on it or i'm not against having it that sensation again hmm. I, I see it as a form of communication which I was just like cutting within myself so that was a good reminder anyway. well, hmm. and it's how people process so for me because I, I think uh, I'm even too attuned to my state so I know when something starts to bother me I know already, and I see the process going from A to Z, and usually I need to spill it out. Like I need to talk to process. Yeah, I'm a talker. Yeah, I'm just like blah, 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 blah. okay, it's out now. <laughs> because my partner is like a very silent thinker, and sometimes as a talker, I'm like, do you, do you want to talk? He's like, no. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't understand my need to talk quite so much. He listen very kindly. But, yeah. Different process, but like uh, I know he's a chewer, and I usually know that when his body starts to talk in any way. So you know, sore throat, mm -hmm. like symptoms is like because there are some things you know inside. Um, so I think it depends on how you work. Sometimes like body pain can be like a hey, try to actually look what it's telling you. Uh, or it can be mind pain from the start and mm. yeah to let it out yeah oh thank you so i think i've taken enough of your time i'm loving this conversation i could go on for forever but we need to go on with our days um for me it, like is there anything that you guys would like to share you don't think we've covered or that you particularly like people to hear on this journey of self-discovery, on this journey of understanding them and their dance? Like, is there anything you would like us to part with? I think if I was me listening to any kind of like self-well-being um, podcast or interview, I myself would like, and if I'm going through the process of, I would like to work on myself, but I don't know kind of how, or I'm kind of lost in it. I would like to hear that I'm not alone in this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And many people, I think, are trying to, to do the same thing. And many people struggle. So the struggle is a part of a process. And that's not a reason to, to stop. Mm. Okay, so keep going no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Has he just stolen your <laughs> yeah. there was a, who was it? One of like thinkers, I think I read a sentence from, from that person like that it's like a ride on bicycle and I like the metaphor. Like just in order to keep the balance you, you have to keep on pedaling. Yeah. And just I just that's for me like okay, that makes sense. Like no matter how this balance you feel you have to keep on pedaling just to just to make things I like that and me if i wanted to say something i think it would be especially towards the current situation uh because we're a bit lost in mm -hmm. the period and how it will affect affect the community and stuff and i can see a lot of point fingers everywhere uh that what you do is wrong like you don't you're not responsible like uh you should blame yourself like there is a lot of outside 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 mm. uh, well, well, 
yeah, I would tell people like the same thing. Everyone is responsible for themselves. You know, if you're not happy about the situation, you're the only one who can enforce your own boundaries and act on yourself. You don't have to point fingers and make people feel bad about themselves and shame them because they're not helping you to reach something that you want to reach mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, Cause I feel like everyone is adult. Everyone takes responsibility for their own good. Um, of course we need to think about others and be empathic and know maybe how our action can have impact in a way, but we're still responsible for ourselves. Mm. Um, so I would, yeah, I would, maybe tell people to pay attention in their talk or how they accuse people or maybe how they blame or to turn the thing inward, you know, Mm -hmm. and themselves, I guess. It's not much on the well-being thing, but... uh, (laughs) I think it is because there's like, um, there's so many aspects to it. And one of the things we're trying to launch onto the website is like the eight dimensions of wellness and some are our own mindset and our own physical well-being and others are environmental so the how you're interacting with your environment and socially with other people right mm-hmm. and i think when we're talking about for me when we're talking about corona it's highlighted we're all on the same rock we're all human beings we're all ultimately breathing the same air relying on the same water source you know ultimately in the really big scheme of things and that one person's actions you can see how it affects because that's why we wear the masks right this is why we've had travel restrictions because that's my social responsibility to look after me and to look after other people Mm -hmm. so i think that's a beautiful analogy for saying you know if you're not comfortable with something that's okay you don't need to be but maybe don't judge or blame others and i guess possibly what i'm hearing in that as well is understand how you'd like to express it so if you believe it might not be the best thing for your community you can voice you know, have we considered X, Y, Z rather than going, this is wrong, you shouldn't do it, you're a bad person and kind of, like kind of escalating on that level, we're kind of going, you know, um, for me, I won't be attending or for me, I prefer not to do this. And would you consider this for the future? So it's a lot kinder communication. Because it's easy to judge, especially when you're scared and when you're confused and yeah, it's yeah. easy to point outside and judge, but everyone has their own angle you know of view there is no right or wrong angle it's like everyone has their own angle Mm. that's beautiful thank you both so much i really enjoyed this conversation